Hello everybody, I'm Count Christo and I just beat Elden Ring. This is going to be <clears throat> something of a review. I just wanted to say a few things about it. I know I'm not an Elden Ring content creator, but you know, I like talking and I like sharing my thoughts, so I'm going to do that. This video will contain absolutely no spo story spoilers, no names of bosses, no nothing for Elden Ring. It will, however, talk about some of the new mechanics in the game. So if you want to... Um, I will also talk about the number of bosses and some of the nature of, uh, of how you fight bosses. Just so we have all the cards on the table. There should be no story spoilers, but there may be spoilers of any new mechanic that's included. You have been warned. So I beat Elden Ring today. Uh, I've been playing it for about three weeks, and uh, I think I've clocked 90 hours, 91 hours so far just to kind of give you some numbers. I tend to be a bit of a completionist. I've yet to beat every boss in the game, which I'm going to go back and do now that I've beaten the final boss. You do not have to go straight into New Game Plus when you beat the game, which is nice. Um, in general, uh, I've, I've gone to the... Uh, I started making a document with some thoughts, uh, and I wrote down 10 out of 10 at the top of it, and I actually don't think that anymore. I think it's a 9 out of 10 game, personally. That's my score. And uh, I'll talk about the pros first, and I'll talk about the cons. And to me, you can't really have a 10 out of 10 game unless it's literally perfect. Like, there's nothing nothing that could be enhanced. If I were ranking it amongst games, yeah, it's in the top 10%. If that's how you want to break it down, absolutely. It's like a it's like a 9.8, let's say. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll change that. It's a 9, it's a 9.8, basically. So, cool things. The aesthetics are really cool. It's a very good game. It's everything you've had in previous Dark Souls games. There's basically nothing that's good from Dark Souls games that's missing in this one, um, with some exceptions, which I'll get to. Uh, only, only one exception I can think of, but basically everything that you've liked in Dark Souls games is in this game. Um, the open world, they realize it extremely well. The open world is very pretty. The map is very nicely done. It could be slightly higher resolution. It's clearly not designed to be viewed on large computer monitors, but because for some reason they're still coding for, uh, <laughs> for consoles, but oh well. It's very nice map. Uh, it's freaking massive. I won't say too much more than that, but because you know I don't want to spoil anything, but it's it's freaking massive, which is very cool. There's tons of bosses. I've read somewhere that there's like, I don't know, 140 boss fights or something. However, and this is my main criticism of the game, there are a lot of repeated bosses, and I found that quite disappointing. There are also a lot of repeated, basically repeated dungeons. So for example, if you go to um you know, you go to various dungeons, and they're just, they're practically copy-pastes of earlier ones. It's like, oh, this is the exact same enemy, but now the thing they throw at me does a different type of, uh, you know, has a different type of damage on it. That's the, like, practically the extent of the change. It's clearly, you know, all the same visual assets, all the same, you know, same music track, same everything. And uh, they've just kind of, you know, moved things around. It feels a bit, I haven't played Bloodborne, but I've watched a lot of it, it feels a bit like a chalice dungeon basically. And then you get to the end, you fight your way through this slightly annoying and slightly repetitive dungeon, and you get to the end, and then it's a boss you've fought before. Uh, but now there's two of them, or now there's three of them, uh, or now there's two of the bosses that you fought before, and they're together. Or, you know, a lot of the time it's literally just exactly the same boss. There's, um, there's one boss that shows up, I think, eight times. There's one boss that shows up, I think, nine times. And there's another one that shows up, like, seven times. And for two of those, there's literally almost no variation. They sometimes add like one new attack, but the attack patterns are basically exactly the same for several of those bosses. I'm not, as I say, I'm not going to spoil which these are, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but they, uh, to me, when you're exploring, what's really good fun about exploring is you find a new place, you fight your way through a new challenge, and your reward as a Souls player, your reward is a new interesting boss, where you have to learn their attack patterns, and you have to, um, you know, figure out how you beat them, figure out whether I want to switch to a lighter weapon, figure out if I need to be quick rolling rather than mid rolling to beat this boss. When you get to a new area and you fight your way through a thing and it's exactly the same boss, every time that happened I was disappointed, and that's why it's not a 10 out of 10. You can cut all the repeated bosses and all of the repetitive repeated dungeons, and the game loses nothing. Technically false, of course, it might lose I don't know, five hours or something. But once you've learned a boss, it's just easy to beat it again. You know, you, these these aren't challenging bosses. The most difficult bosses in the game do not repeat. So 
it really seems to me like a, a complete waste to have these extra areas because all they do is dilute the quality of the content in the game. Now, I know I've said a lot of negative things and I'm giving this game a 9.8 out of 10. Why is that? It's because Souls is still fan friggin tastic. But if you want to fight the same boss over again, bring back the bonfire aesthetic mechanic. That was really cool in Dark Souls 2. It's one of the best things in Dark Souls 2 that has been dropped by the Souls series. The ability to refight a boss was uh, was really cool. And maybe you think it's unbalanced. You get to pick up too many items too many times. Fine, just do it on the boss. Just be able to go to a boss fight and then... Uh, you know, trigger the, the Sight of Grace or whatever that triggers on the boss and then fight them again. That'd be fun. There's no need to go around and it's like, you know, every time you see that boss, you're like, okay, I know exactly how to dodge your attacks. I'm going to beat you first time. Like, so for example, as again, I'm not going to give spoilers, but there's one of them who appears nine times and the only difference is the type of elemental damage they do and the amount of health they have. That's literally it. Uh, I died like, I don't know, three or four times the first time I fought him, and then I literally did not die to them ever again. So there's like eight bosses in the game that you beat first time because you already know how to beat them, and that's not, it's not very engaging. But, as I say, lots of negative things, mostly because that's just at the top of my mind, but it's a really good game. The uh, Some of the graphical stuff is not, you know, it doesn't look like... I don't know, a CryEngine game or whatever, but it, the aesthetic is fantastic. And again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but a few bosses, they blow it out of the water. In terms of visual appeal, I'm not sure about gameplay, probably also gameplay, but in terms of visual appeal, Elden Ring has like the top 10 bosses of the Soul series. All of them are in Elden Ring. Every single one is in Elden Ring. It's a really, really, really visually impressive game. Um, in terms of the prettiest areas, the two prettiest boss arenas, the prettiest attacks, the prettiest boss designs, the most kind of extravagant uh, magic casts at you, they're all in Elden Ring. It's a fantastic visual experience. One other minor complaint is that I think the upgrade materials are really limited in this compared to um, some previous titles. You can get infinite access to them, but it comes really quite late in the game, and... Uh, to me, that's just pointless. It limits the ability of the player to vary what weapon they're using, which is bad, because there's tons of really cool weapons, but I think I only used like five in the uh, in the entire game. I think I used, no, I think I used six total weapons, because basically, you know, when you have one weapon that's plus 24 and one weapon that's zero, the plus 24 is going to be way better, even if it's way less cool, <laughs> which is a shame. So personally, I think you should not find individual upgrade materials. You should just find the ability to upgrade them one higher. So there's one item you can find in three places that lets you get one higher, you know, from one to two to three to four, and there's something else that gets you from four to five to six to seven. And you don't have to find a specific one to get to seven, you just find an item that's in that bracket and it lets you get one higher in the bracket. I think that'd be cool, working basically like Esther's Flask Reinforcement. And then you're able, if you have that, you're able to upgrade your, your weapons, and you can still pay yourself some, or whatever, you know, runes in this case, but just think of them as salts, personally. Um, those are my only two complaints, really. It's literally like, not being allowed to, not not allowed to, but it being really suboptimal to play with a variety of weapons puts it from 10 to 9.9. .9. And the fact that there's a bunch of bosses that are repeated and a bunch of dungeons that are repeated takes it from 9.9 .9 to 9.8. That, in a nutshell, is my brief review. Um, oh yeah, one other thing. It's quite easy. Um, I think compared to, I think I found it easier than any Souls game that I've played, but that's probably, and that's without summons, obviously. Um, and I did it without magic, but that's, you know, just to taste, basically. Um, that's probably because I've just played so much Souls now. It's probably not actually easier if you're a first-time player. But one of the things that does make it easier is that it's such an open world. You can go anywhere, almost anywhere, like right at the start, without fighting anybody. So you can, uh, you can just loot up and get loads of items and get loads of uh, everything really, really quickly. Um, so... That makes it a lot easier and your ability to level up is so easy because you can go wherever you want if you want to farm like i don't i think i farmed once and that was for upgrade materials rather than souls but yeah it's pretty easy to be honest i think um but the good thing about souls and i'll use this the end of this video as an excuse to talk about um difficulty in souls games because i'm sure as heck not making a separate video on that um it's as easy as you want it to be which is good. So I'm going to do, you know, I've just beat the game. I'm going to beat all the rest of the bosses that I didn't find or get to. And then I'm going to do a Souls level 1 run. Uh, you know, never upgrading from, from level 1. You get 10 in each stat, I think, in this one. If you play as the, the class that starts at level 1. I think that's right. 
Um, and that's going to be, you know, freaking impossible. <laughs> and if you want the game to be easy, uh, just grind levels and then use magic. <laughs> and it'll be completely trivial. So the good thing about these games, and why I'm not particularly annoyed that I found it a bit easy, is that it's just optional. You know, if you want it to be harder, level less. That's it. That's all there is to it. If you want it to be easier, level more. There you go. Dark Souls difficulty is optional. Of course, not if you're um, badly physically disabled, then it's not quite so simple, but for most of us. Um, I think that's about it. That's all I had to say, really. It's a really good game. If you haven't got it already, you should go get it. I don't have, like, a sponsored link or whatever for you to click, but you should definitely go get it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. I've been Cam Christo. I realize this is not my usual content, but I wanted to share my thoughts, so I hope you enjoyed them, and I will. See you next time. Bye.